Hello everyone, so this is video two, continuing of the last one where we installed the distributor, we got the engine ready to the proper position, and then we put our distributor in so that it was ready to fire. Uh, if you did that correctly, when you hit the key, um, it should be close enough to where the timing needs to be so that the engine should be able to start and run. Uh, the engine or the vehicle I'm gonna be using is my Dually here, so it's an 87 throttle body fuel injection uh, Chevy truck, Chevy Dually. Um, so this is the same as our lab engines, uh, number seven, and our ram jets essentially. Um, most, or if not all, of the electronic fuel injection engines you guys are going to be working on that have distributors are going to have some type of method that you need to now disable the computer's ability to advance the base timing. Right? So base timing is the starting point from which the computer will advance or retard, right? So usually, depending on the system, you're looking at the computer has the ability to advance and retard something like 20, 23 degrees of advance or retard. Um, it's always gonna try to advance until uh, it picks up some ignition knock and then it's gonna back the timing back out of it. So it needs to be to the proper starting point or base timing so that it has a proper range to advance or retard from. So what I'll do is I'll show you some of the stuff that we're looking at. I already have our timing light hooked up, so power and ground from the battery. Uh, inductive pickup is going to be onto ignition lead number one. So whenever cylinder one is firing, uh, the timing light is going to flash. Right? So what the flash is going to enable us to do is to look down at the timing cover and balancer marks so that we can actually see uh, where that uh, spark is occurring um, on its own. Right, so I'll show you guys some of the stuff we're looking at. Uh, hopefully you guys can see it. A um, little bit of Blair Witch as I kind of move back and forth just because, um, well, it's only me. So uh, once I fire this thing up, it, it does have a gear drive uh, for timing chain or timing gear assembly. So it is a little loud. Um, hopefully you'll be able to see what we need to from this whole procedure, okay? So when we look at the instructions, this one here tells us that our base timing is zero degrees. This isn't automatic. So where we're looking at is right over here, right? The base degrees is zero degrees. And then it tells us procedure, what we need to do to take away the computer's ability to advance the base timing. So it's just whatever static timing is. Okay, there's our power and ground hooked up to our battery. Here is our timing light and uh, the inductive pickup is down here. Uh, you can see it hooked up to ignition lead number one. Make sure it's away from exhaust and moving things like the belt and the fan so that it doesn't um, melt. Now, I'll try and shine this. So if you look, where am I looking? Oh, there we go. So if I look right kind of there, you can see the line that I've highlighted on the balancer. And then you can kind of see that scale, right? It looks like a bunch of V grooves. So the deepest V groove where it's sitting right now is zero degrees. And then before and after, so to the left of that is gonna be advanced and to the right of that is retard for base timing. So that is what we should be, we'll be able to see when I have the engine running, the timing light's gonna flash down in that area, okay? Now, on the distributor, I have already cracked loose the distributor hold down. So the distributor hold down is the little, right down there, that nut that holds on the little bracket to the distributor base. And that's gonna allow me to rotate the distributor housing, okay? So it needs to be what I call a sweet spot. It needs to be loose enough so that when it's running, I can actually rotate the housing of the distributor to advance it or retard it. Um, but tight enough so that when I let go of the housing, it doesn't kind of rotate back to where I don't want it, right? It needs to be able to hold that position. So we'll see how this works. Um, the connector I need to undo is this single pin connector over here on my truck. Um, typically on a, a stock truck or vehicle, um, it could be buried. You might have to remove a, an access cover or it could even be a connector that you need to provide a ground to, right? Again, that's gonna vary depending on the vehicle you're working on. So let's fire this thing up, see if we can see some base timing marks.
The other thing you might need is the engine might need to be warm to a certain temperature. So you can see down here where that line is lining up. If I take my snap-on timing light and I hit advance, that I can actually advance it. So you see how it's at zero now? Right? It's flashing and it's at zero. So the snap-on timing light will actually offset that light to show me the exact advance. So right now, my engine is set to seven degrees of advance. So the base timing for this engine, as per factory, is zero degrees. So what I need to do is rotate the distributor until that mark comes around so that it's in the deepest part of that V. take and plug in my connector again. And likely, I'll have to shut it off and start it back up so that the computer is now re-enabled. tell but the idle is a lot higher the timing mark is now gone because the computer is advancing the timing so if I hit my little plus button on the timing light I can actually bring that mark back around and right there our mark is back so the computer has now adjusted from that zero and running at 20 degrees of timing advance distributor so that the distributor doesn't move anymore and this would be the factory recommendation to where it needs to be uh, to have the optimum power performance right so again the computer is keeping trying to keep advancing the ignition timing so the spark is occurring sooner in relationship to where the, uh, the piston is based on what the crankshaft is rotating at and it's always trying to advance ignition timing it keeps advancing until it picks up an ignition knock. Right? It has a knock sensor. It's going to pick up a noise, basically a, a smack, and that's going to register uh, an ignition knock. So the computer module just says, oh, bad things are happening. That's too much advance. So it's going to back the timing back out, and then it's going to sneak back up till it finds that knock, and it's going to back it out again. Um, and that's an important thing so that the engine is always running with the most power and the most efficiency. Right? So if the base timing is off, then we're going to have lack of power, we're going to have uh, high fuel consumption, we're going to have poor fuel economy, things of that nature. So that's pretty much it. Again, that's, that's pretty standard for a distributor engine. If it is an older engine that has a mechanical distributor, it's going to uh, hold true the mechanical uh, weights. It's going to have a mechanical advance that's going to have a centrifugal weight to it and then the faster the distributor spins, it's gonna now spin the actual advance within the distributor itself. So those types of distributors, you might have to unplug uh, a vacuum advance, right? There might be a vacuum diaphragm on that distributor and to uh, set it to base timing mode, you're gonna have to disable or unplug that vacuum advance. So it's gonna be whatever is it's static 
you're gonna have to watch your idle RPM, right? Because the faster it's running, those centrifugal weights are gonna take over. You don't wanna get into the, the mechanical advance, you just wanna sit that base time. So hopefully you guys were able to see what I was trying to help you with. Um, sorry for the shaky camera stuff and the engine noise, but uh, yeah, that would be base timing. Okay, hope that helps.